right now that 92% of companies in the S&P 500 have reported earnings. Let's talk about the performance of the index overall. It's on pace for its highest year-over-year -year earnings growth since the second quarter of 2022, but it would be even higher if it was not for one company, and Josh Schaefer is here to tell us. Well, the banner told us, but you'll tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> Bristol Myers Squibb, right? Of course, the earnings call that we all followed very closely over the last couple of weeks that we really had our eyes on is what dragged down the index. Um, I think you guys were probably with me and being a little bit surprised in seeing this stat overall. So Bristol Myers Squibb is in the healthcare sector and really the big thing that stuck, stuck out for them here was they had a one-time loss that they reported. They don't think this is gonna be a continuing issue. This had to do with an acquisition, but they reported Earnings per share, an earnings per share loss of four dollars and forty cents. That was compared to a uh, two dollars earnings per share in the positive, uh, going back a year ago. So a massive loss. Then when you take that and sort of extrapolate it to the S and P five hundred growth, their big loss leads you to a massive decline in S&P 500 earnings growth. So you go from what would have been 8.3% earnings growth for the S&P 500 down to 5.4 just by taking out Bristol-Myers Squibb. Now, if you also took out a couple more companies in the healthcare sector, you would actually have even further earnings growth. So if you took out Galeed Sciences and you took out Pfizer, you would actually have 9.7% growth for the S&P 500. So really the healthcare sector's 25% negative earnings growth kind of weighing on. What yeah, we're when I the saw this chart in your week ahead post, I literally didn't believe it. <laughs> and I was like, this guy's- I thought it was wrong. I was like, this guy screwed something up. Now we're gonna have to do a big fix. This went out as an email, this went out <laughs> uh, all kinds of ways. Um, and, and to put some numbers, when we do the earnings per share here, you know, the $4, um, $4.40 on an adjusted basis. The unadjusted number is $5.89. That's an $11.9 billion loss to put you know dollar figures around it. On an adjusted basis, $8.9 billion loss for BMY in the last quarter. The stock's only down 10% in the last month. So it was somewhat priced in. Yeah, it was a somewhat priced in. <laughs> it, it, but with the yeah. three stocks we're talking about too in the yeah. sector as a whole, that was sort of interesting as I started looking into this more is you see this and you see the big healthcare decline and you think, Oh, probably one of the worst performing sectors, at least in the last month, yeah. right? No. Healthcare is actually outperforming the S&P 500 in the last month, marginally 1.4% compared to 1.2% for the S&P. But I think a lot of that has to do with when you look at what happened this quarter, it's not really expected to happen yeah. next quarter for the sector. Well, and also if you look at XLV, I mean, Eli Lilly's 12% of the thing. Yeah. Plus, you know, Eli Lilly, United, and J&J, &J, that's over 20%, almost, almost 30% of the ETF mm -hmm. right there. What are the expectations then for Q2? For Q2, 17% earnings growth year over year for healthcare. It would actually be the second best performing sector in the S&P 500 in the coming quarter. And I do think it gets to, with healthcare, I don't the most interesting part of the sector to me is just there's only a couple companies there that are really, really interesting, right? And they all have to do probably with GLP-1s. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the companies that are dragging this down actually have a lot less to do with the hot trade in the sector. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of look at it and you're like, oh, well. well and I think, it, you know, the other the healthcare and utilities is in this bucket as well. I know I've brought up utilities like five times. You can help Sorry. yourself. It, these are, I mean, these are defensive, it, all else equal. These mm -hmm. are defensive type sectors. And in this market, they've turned into growth sectors, basically, right? Utilities are now an AI play with the new data centers mm -hmm. and power mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, if there's a non AI meme trade out there, or, you know, like it's GLP ones. Well, and, and that sits within healthcare. To, to, to take it a step further too on the utilities thing, it was interesting with talking about earnings and okay, we can explain healthcare maybe not trading off because Q2 is supposed to be good. Yep. Utilities is the third worst performing sector in earnings this quarter. It's also supposed to be in the bottom three next quarter. And so I think over the last week, we've been trying to reason, you know, why is the, stop, why is the sector moving so much? And we got to this, well, they're undervalued. People are seeing opportunity there. I think, there's a big, Rates, yeah. I think there's a big part of the AI trade in that too. Absolutely, yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, I, you know, we sat here at the beginning of the year, why are industrials ripping? And it's like, I don't know, is Trump gonna win? Is he <laughs> gonna build the walls? Like, no, this is probably an AI related yeah, trade. Yeah, energy Everything's trade. AI. Healthcare, healthcare could be AI, right? Unless it's, well, unless it's Ozempic. It's but, either AI or GLP. But healthcare has both working for it. Yeah. You could get to the AI trade in healthcare too. You can use, we'll the, uh, yeah, sure. We'll leave that to <laughs> Those the Those that are betting on it you are hoping use, they can. You can use AI to prescribe more <laughs> GLP ones. And you know, it's probably gonna happen deal. sooner than you think. It's probably happening right now. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> I just got a prescription. <laughs>